All right, so in this video, we're gonna talk about how to figure out a mass fraction based on a chemical formula. So this is what's gonna be considered a theoretical mass fraction or a theoretical weight fraction. So do this with kind of any chemical formula. So let's start with the most complicated we can think of, and this would be calcium phosphate. So Ca3, PO4, 2. Now, there are lots of different ways to calculate a theoretical mass fraction. The one I'm gonna give you in this video, I like giving because I find it pretty cookie cutter meaning that you don't really have to think about what you're doing while you do it. So, to get the theoretical weight fraction, we're always gonna start with the mole fraction. And our mole fraction is always, in the denominator, we're gonna have one mole of our parent compound. In this case, CA3, PO4, taken twice. The numerator is gonna be whatever we're interested in. And the number that's gonna appear on top depends on what we're interested in. So let's say we're interested in calcium. Well, it's gonna be a mole of calcium on top. And if we want to know how many moles of calcium there are in one mole of Ca3PO4, well, we've got a three here, so this would end up being three moles of Ca. Now let's say I didn't want to do Ca, let's say I want to do phosphate. Well, denominator is still gonna be the same. How many moles of phosphate? or in this compound, but we've got a two in front of it, so we're just gonna have a two here. Let's say we wanna do really hard. How many moles of oxygen? Well, I have two, four, eight moles of oxygen for every one mole of calcium phosphate. So this is the first part, and this is the mole fraction. So to develop your theoretical, always start with the mole fraction because you know that from the empirical formula. Next, you're gonna have two conversion factors. All these conversion factors are doing are converting your moles to grams. So we're gonna have one mole, of conver one conversion factor for converting oxygen to grams. So for our mole of oxygen, we have 16.0 grams of oxygen. If we were working with calcium, we'd put them in the weight of calcium. If we had phosphate, we'd put them in the weight of phosphate. This first conversion factor is typically the one that corresponds to what's on top. Now again, your multiplying doesn't matter, but I prefer to do what I'm interested in first. The other one is gonna be one over the molecular weight of the parent compound, and this is always gonna be the same. So for every mole of Ca3, PO4 taken twice, I have so many grams for the molecular weight. Calcium 3, PO4 taken twice. So, first conversion factor converts the numerator to grams. Second conversion factor converts the denominator to grams. At this point, you are done. All you have to do is multiply through. Take your mole fraction, multiply by your two molecular weights, one over the other, and this will get you a weight fraction. Now, two things about this. First of all, what are units on this weight fraction? There are two schools of thought on this. You have grams and moles. This should all be unitless when you finish because grams cancel out grams, moles cancel out moles. That is one school of thought. It is not necessarily right or wrong, but it is a one school of thought. The second school of thought is to say that, well, really, it's not grams, it's grams of oxygen and grams of calcium phosphate. So your final units on this are grams of what you're interested in and divided by grams of parent compound. I personally subscribe to that second one because if you take a weight fraction and you say it's unitless, it means I can multiply it by any mass and get a meaningful number. If I keep the units of grams of oxygen for grams of calcium phosphate, I can only multiply by grams of calcium phosphate to get those out of the denominator to get me back to grams of oxygen. So either school of thought is correct, I just prefer the one that says the actual units are grams per gram. Now, the second one, a bit more entertaining. How many sig figs are in this answer? Well, here's the thing. This is infinitely precise based off of chemical formula. Conversion factors should not affect your significant figures, and so this is an infinitely precise number, so we should have an infinitely precise answer. It's joy of theoretical, right? It's infinitely correct, even though if it's, we really can't measure infinite precision. Traditionally, what I say, do three sig figs in your final answer. So whatever your weight fraction is, just do three sig figs. Keep in mind, though, your answer needs to make sense. Weight fractions have to be between zero and one. So if you're getting a number bigger than one, you've done something wrong. If you're getting 
Yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, make sure your answer is less than one. So, summarize for you. Want to figure out a theoretic weight fraction? There's lots of ways to do it. Easiest way for me, use the mole fraction from the chemical formula and convert your moles and moles using two conversion factors to grams to grams. Report your answer to three significant figures. Units of your weight fraction, grams of what you're interested in, divided by the grams of the parent compound.